Master Chef is back. Hundreds have auditioned, and now the best 40 amateur cooks are through. Fire! If you get drunk, then I might get through. Each week, 10 new contestants battle for just four places in the quarterfinal. I think this is the best pudding I've eaten this year. Only the strongest will make it through to the final challenges. Each one has to be perfect. Yes! I've polished my spoon, I've loosened my belt, I'm ready to go. The taste buds are ready, buddy. It's time to rock. These five amateurs all think they've got what it takes to become Master Chef. But at the end of today's heat, only two will become quarter finalists. Welcome. Welcome to the Master Chef Kitchen. This is the start of a new competition, and we're very excited. One of you could well be our next Master Chef champion. This is your first test. What we're asking you to do is produce for us a calling card, a dish that says something about you as a cook, something that can show Greg and I how good a cook you are and how good a cook you could be. Impress us, guys. That's the deal. Just impress us. One hour, 15 minutes. Let's cook. Olivia, where are you from? Glasgow. I love Glasgow. I know a gentleman shouldn't ask a lady, but how, how old are you then? 20. Wow, that's young. I mean, I'm, I know I'm young, but I've been cooking for a while, so. Tell me what it is you're making. Kind of a mashup of things. I'm doing uh, teriyaki meatballs and a panko breadcrumb, chili pea puree, and a salad with a miso dressing and some pickle. I'm a waitress in a sushi restaurant, so all the flavors that the chefs are working with, I love. Do you know how this all looks on a plate? Um, no. <laughs> um, <I've laughs> it, will, it will look okay, hopefully. I've not, I've not practiced the plating up yet. I'll give it a go. Good luck, Olivia. Thank you. Olivia as a cook seems to me as be very, very adventurous. Teriyaki meatballs. Teriyaki, we know, is soy sauce and it marinates beef and usually it's fried. But what Olivia's done is got a whole rib of beef with chilli and soy sauce and sesame oil and pureed the whole lot to make a meatball. Then she's going to deep fry them in breadcrumbs. So the outside should be crispy, lovely. But will the meatballs be cooked in the middle or will they be raw meat? My weakness is timekeeping, which will probably <laughs> really be a problem but uh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. <laughs> My dish is uh, chicken thighs uh, stuffed with mozzarella and chili. I'm serving it with a uh, potato gratin stack, uh, glazed carrots and a pork reduction. I wanted to do something that's got bags of flavour and that uh, I couldn't mess up too much unless I don't cook the chicken and my sauce goes wrong. Panicking now. <laughs> Port sauce with chicken and cheese and potatoes and cheese and cream. Can I ask you about you and cooking? Yeah, of course. Cool. So I was um, I was raised by my mum, uh, who's uh, a good Greek woman. Uh, my nan, who is uh, a good Greek woman, and watching them, I learned to cook, and uh, that's what I've done ever since. Mum knows you're on MasterChef, does she? She does. Yes. And what does she think about it? As my mum, she thinks that I'm the best cook in the world. Jen, why have you not got your carrots on while you're doing that? Um, my carrots only need about 35 minutes, so... They can always sit there, can't they? They can sit there. Any reason why you're shaking like that? 
because I'm terrified. <laughs> Thank you. You've had 25 minutes already. We're almost halfway. Today I'm really confident with my dish. It's something that I've practiced time and time again. So I'm extremely confident that it's going to come out A1. James, you look pretty confident, or am I wrong? Yeah, things are going well so far. Um, I've got it all up here, and I'm kind of working through. I'm doing like a, an Asian surf and turf, if, if you like. So we've got beef in the uh, rice wine and pepper sauce, and then we've got um, prawn tempura. Um, I've been to Thailand um, a couple of times, um, so I, I just fell in love with the food. It just tastes delicious. Delicious is a really good place to start. It certainly is, Craig. <laughs> James is trying to show that he's got precision and elegance, tempura prawns, little bits of crispy beef, wonderful little bits of salad. I don't know if this is one dish or almost like a bento box of bits and pieces. Who knows? James's prawns, he put them battered inside the basket before he put them in the deep fryer. When he tries to get them out, all the, all the lovely tempura batter's gonna come off. I've not used a deep fat fryer before for these, so some of the batter's stuck to the bottom. But it's all a bit of a learning curve, I suppose. I love feeding people. Perhaps I should have done a cookery course, but my mother wasn't keen on it. She said, oh, you don't want to be in a kitchen slaving away for the rest of your life. But actually, if you love it, it isn't slaving away. You're making a pudding, by the looks of it. I know the way to a man's heart. <laughs> It'll be a blackberry and apple tart with a little crumble on top, with creme brulee with apple and calvados underneath. Why MasterChef? I want to prove to myself and maybe a few others that I can cook actually more than just a family meal. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> An apple and blackberry crumble tart served with a creme brulee and custard and a plum and blackberry sauce. It seems to me that she's trying to do too much. You've got 15 minutes left. Just 15 minutes. I'm cooking pan fried sea bass, and that's on a bed of crushed new potatoes with a chorizo and mussel sauce. It was a little bit of a, an inside joke with my family because I spent far too much money on food whilst I was at uni and every time I'd come home, uh, my parents would say, well, don't complain you haven't got any money because you're cooking sea bass every week. Did you get a reputation as a decent cook at uni? I did. I was actually called Master Chef. Were you? I'd buy a few, yes. So hopefully I'll live up to that reputation. With all the experimentation going on in the room, we have a classic cook in Robert. We have a dish which I like the sound of. Sea bass, crushed new potatoes, mussels and chorizo. I want it to have a zing to it. It needs to be punchy. It can't just be flat. The cream's going to take some of the edge off the acidity, so that should balance things out. But I'll be able to tell when, uh, when I've got the cream in there. I don't want to do that until the last minute, though. Listen, last 10 minutes. Come on. And there's huge amounts of experimentation going on. Dishes which are definitely their own creations, things that I haven't seen before, things I haven't tasted before. And one or two of them scares me just a little bit. A couple of them I'm very excited by. You have just three minutes. Perfect. Fortunately. I'm really struggling. I this is not going to be done. I could have done with a bit more time practicing at home with my timekeeping. I'm pretty stressed right now.
That's it. Time's up. Stop. Sorry, sorry. I don't have food on my plate. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what happened? Is it still in the... Still cooking. Oh. You put these on? No. No? No. Oh. With her teriyaki meatball still in the pan, communications student Olivia is serving a chili pea puree with pickled radish, mustard mayonnaise, and a carrot, cucumber, and miso salad. I ran out of time. Your meatballs, which is the dish, haven't made it to the plate, so it, it is disappointing. And I also find the puree a little disappointing as, as well, because it tastes a bit watery. Your intent, however, is good. I like your salad. I like the crunchiness of it, the crispness of it. That's great. But it ain't no dish. That's the issue. If that's, like, all my ability right there, then I just need to go home now. Um, I, hope, I hope I've got more to show. I think I do. Recruitment consultant Tony's calling card is chicken roulade stuffed with mozzarella and wrapped in parma ham with crispy chicken skin, a parmesan potato gratin, carrots, and a port and red wine reduction. There is so much to admire. The chicken is very, very well cooked. The gratin is brilliantly well made and buttery with the hint of the parmesan as well. That sauce is meaty and very well made. Your cooking skill is very, very good indeed. I have to tell you one thing. I really doubted this dish. I thought, no way. I'm impressed. Thank you. Good job. Cheers. I'm really pleased. Terrifying being judged by, uh, by John and Greg, but um, the feedback was positive. I'm really happy. Healthcare manager Sarah's dessert is an apple and blackberry crumble tart with an apple and calvados creme brulee accompanied by a plum and blackberry coulis and a creme anglaise. I thought the brulee was going to be frivolous. It's not frivolous. Actually, the texture, that sort of lovely pillowish creaminess with that crunch of the sugar, goes really well with the tart. The filling in the tart is luscious and lovely. I think the whole thing is done very, very well indeed, and good on you. Sharpness, sweetness, creaminess, custard, a really well-made brulee. Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm yours. I'm yours. Thank you. Elated. They loved my dish, um, and so that is just great. It's fabulous. Such a surprise. I think you've already got Greg's vote. 30 year old James has cooked beef and asparagus in a rice wine and pepper sauce with king prawn tempura and a coriander chili dipping sauce, chili and ginger egg fried rice, and a salad of pickled cabbage, cucumber, and bean shoots. Um, your prawn tempura hasn't worked. No, no. Um, it's, it's soggy. But I like three of your four bowls, and I think you may have potential. Okay, great. Thanks, Greg. Your salad has got some guts. Yep. But your dressing even, in there, chuck some seeds in. Yep. The seeds of the chilli, make it fiery. More right. guts, James. More guts. Go for it. Greg seemed to be a bit more kinder about my food and really enjoyed it. Uh, but at the same time, John gave me some really great feedback in terms of just being a bit more bolder with my flavours. Last up is English literature graduate Robert, who has served his pan-fried sea bass on a bed of crushed new potatoes with a chorizo, mussel and cream sauce.
Your fish is cooked nicely. The crushed potatoes are buttery. Love the flavour of chorizo. But cream has given it a thickness and a stickiness I think is wrong. And it's also made the whole thing go a ghastly 1970s orange. I've got to agree with Greg on that. I, I think the cream is making it a really heavy dish. Let it be light. Just the tomato at the last minute. And that chorizo, let it melt down so all the flavour comes out of it. You've got beautiful ingredients. Take care of all of them. Okay. Some fair criticism. I'll take it on board. I mean, the cream was done for a reason, but obviously it hasn't worked. I mean, they're the judges and they do this for a living, so I think they know what they're talking about. Thanks very much indeed. Some great food. Really, really good food. This is how it's going to work. Greg and I will each choose our favourite dish. Those two contestants are going to go straight through and the remaining three will have to cook off against each other to stay in the competition. Should we both choose the same dish, then we will revert to our second choice. I find this really exciting because I have absolutely no idea who John's going to choose. I know who I want. My favourite calling card dish was cooked by... Tony, well done, son. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more cook to go straight through. My favourite dish today. Sarah. Thank you. Tony and Sarah, off you go. Guys, that's a relief. That's amazing. That's actually something that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I'm amazed so, that Greg didn't go for pudding. And, <laughs> and John went for pudding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well done. Well done. Brilliant. Oh. You now have to cook to stay in the competition. This is a reinvention test. In front of you are the main ingredients you used with your calling card dish. What we want you to do now is make us a completely different dish using those ingredients, okay? Not invention, reinvention. At the end of this, Two of you will be joining Tony and Sarah, and one of you will be leaving the competition. It must be completed and on your plate in one hour and 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The contestants can also use ingredients from the larder, which includes a selection of fruit and veg, cheese, nuts, and herbs and spices. It wasn't a surprise that I was going to be staying to cook off, so the only way is up after that, so I can't, I can't do much worse. I'm feeling confident going into the next round so that I, I can actually show them what I'm really made of. I'm fired up. I definitely don't want this to end now. I certainly hope it doesn't. I think this test is excellent because we're giving them the main ingredients they love and just asking them to change tack a little bit. They should be able to do that. Olivia's main ingredient from her calling card was a ribeye steak. Last time, of course, you went Asian. Are you doing that again? I'm not doing that because I wanted to do something completely different. Um, I'm doing a leek white wine cream sauce. I'm pan frying my steak and then I'm doing some roasted tomatoes and crushed baby potatoes with rosemary and garlic. Are you glad you got a second chance? Uh, yeah, I'm very relieved that it wasn't all over after the first challenge. I want to stay in the competition. Good. I think Olivia's got a lot to prove. I really do. Because at the moment, what we've seen from her is a chilli pea puree and some sliced radishes. This whole competition for me is riding on this one dish.
Right, reinventors. 25 minutes have gone. 50 minutes left. James has been given a sirloin steak and the prawns used as the base of his last dish. James, it doesn't look like you're going Asian this time. No, um, I'm going more with a curry this time around. Uh, with, with um, I don't know. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'd call the other dish, to be honest. Spicy bubble and squeak is what it's going to be. Yep, I did just think back to um, some of the dishes that I've done when there's just been leftovers in the fridge. So I kind of picked out those ingredients and thought, right, let's go with that and give that a go. Fingers crossed. Yes. Yep. Thank you. James right now has changed tact completely because his bench is covered with spices. But what I like from James is big, bold, gutsy flavours. I've made a dish similar to this at home before and I've made like lamb to jeans before as well. So this is almost a bit of a steak version. It tastes fine and I've tried it, so let's just hope John and Greg like it. Twenty minutes left. Twenty minutes. Robert's main ingredient was a sea bass. So what was the dish? It is a uh, pan-fried sea bass again. I don't want to mess around with that. I cooked that well last time. Uh, that's with a tomato, fennel and basil salad and a mussel vinaigrette. Would you like me to go and get your pot of double cream? Do you know, I did actually have a pot of double cream in my hands earlier, but I, uh, I swiftly put that back on the cabinet. Good lad. No problem. Good lad. Best of luck. Cheers, Greg. I want to show finesse. I feel like I, I, I overcomplicate things with the unnecessary. So less is more with this one, I think. Last five minutes. Please, come on. I'm feeling a lot better now than I was last challenge. That's it. Stop now. Stop. <laughs> it's Moroccan. <laughs> I've gone down the Moroccan route in you. <laughs> We're done now. Did that just happen? We're done now. <laughs> what more can we do? Moroccan. Exactly. Robert, you're up first. Up you come, mate. Bring your dish, please. Robert's original dish featured sea bass. He's now serving it with a tomato, fennel and basil salad and a mussel vinaigrette. Your fish, the skin's beautifully crispy, it's all well seasoned. I like the vibrancy of the shredded fennel underneath and the sweetness of the tomatoes. And then the saltiness of the, the mussels as well, with that sharp vinaigrette, the whole thing dances on your palate. Mm. It's very, very good. Fantastic. Mate, that's a knockout. If I were you, I'd be really pleased with myself because I, I, I think that's super, absolutely super. Well done. Hey. Hey. I hardly had a bad word to say about it, thankfully. And I mean, given the fact that we went into it not really knowing what we were going to do, I can only say I'm happy. After her disaster with the teriyaki meatballs, Olivia's now fried her ribeye steak and is serving it with crushed rosemary potatoes, roasted tomatoes and red onion, and a creamy leek sauce. Your potatoes and your steak are cooked well. You have packed flavour into this dish. The sauce is sweet, strong, well seasoned, very good. Potatoes taste of rosemary. But leek, rosemary, beef, tomato and onions is a very unusual combination. However, I'm pleased because you showed you can bring out flavour in food and you've got a good touch. 
I agree with Greg, because I think things taste really good. But you're not putting things together that belong together. I, I'm pleased you've cooked something for me, though, this time. I don't know. I'm, nor I, I'm normally a better cook than this. I'm just slipping. <laughs> slipping. <laughs> last up is James, who has used the beef steak and prawns from his last dish to make a beef and tomato stew spiced with garam masala, served with the prawns and a bubble and squeak spiced with cumin and paprika. An interesting looking dish. I'll say interesting. It's a bit brown. Yeah. Yeah. Your sauce around that beef mm. is taste of tomato and beef stock and very little else. Mm. And it, it, it's, it's got a little hint of chilli in the background, but it's not vibrant like an Indian dish or like a Moroccan dish. Mm. I want coriander, I want spice, and it doesn't have it. Your prawns are cooked and your beef has remained tender, which is very good. I don't think there's much wrong with you as a cook. However, it's very dangerous to start cooking without knowing what it is you're going to cook. Yeah, yeah. A little bit deflated after that one, and it's fair enough. I think I messed up on this one a little bit. John and I have now got to discuss your dishes, make a decision. One of you will be leaving the competition. Off you go, thank you. I think a test like this actually shows the level of their repertoire, of their experience. Yep. Young Robert did an amazing job. That sea bass was excellent. And he actually listened. The dish with his reinvention was lighter, it was fresher. I think Robert's a decent cook. He stays. Olivia had a disaster of a calling card round, but a competent, if a bit misdirected, reinvention test. I'd love to say that I've done enough because I'm nowhere near ready to go home because it's only just started, but I think I might be going home. James's food with his calling card, lots of work in it, but for me it needed to be a little bit more ferocious in flavour, it needed more spice. However, in this reinvention test, that was a muddle. That was not very nice at all. I really don't want to be the first one out, but I wouldn't be surprised if I was going home on this one. Which one of these under pressure is going to cope? Two of you will be joining Tony and Sarah, and one of you will be leaving the competition. I believe that was a decent start. The ups and downs of two different rounds. The person leaving us. It's James. Thanks very much, James. Thanks, James. The pressure got to me and that was it, I just muddled through, not really knowing exactly what I was actually doing, and I think that really showed at the end. I am so happy, I can't believe that, I really thought I was going home. And I definitely dodged a bullet there. Today, you are cooking for a place in the quarterfinal. Only two of you will make it through. Two of you will be going home. You today are not cooking just for Greg and I, you are cooking for three past champions of MasterChef. Matt Follis, Drew Baker, and Shalina Permalu. 
two courses, four plates of each course. The main course in an hour and your dessert 15 minutes later. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. My stomach's in a knot and I can hardly eat, but I'm trying to talk calming thoughts and think calming thoughts and think. This is just a kitchen. I love cooking. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so what is it you're going to be making? Salmon en croute, um, and it is uh, with a watercress sauce. And the dessert is uh, an orange liqueur parfait with a mango coulis. What about the people you're feeding today? Terrifying. <laughs> They're great cooks, obviously, and they've got great palates. And I'm just hoping that this has got enough flavour in it um, to, to impress them. Yeah. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Right, better get on. She's making proper flaky pastry, grating ice cold butter into flour to make her own flaky pastry. There's somebody who's really committed. I think after the reinvention test and, and the pressure of having to come up with something on the fly, I am reassured that we're going now back to something that's tried and tested. Hopefully I can prove that my own dishes can stand up to the challenge. First of all, we've got pan-seared calves liver with cheesy polenta, uh, balsamic onions and pancetta crisp. Yep. And then for dessert, we've got what I'm calling a cranach uh, panna cotta. So it's sort of riffing on the flavours of Kranachan. Could you just tell Greg what riffing with the flavours means, just to help him out? Um, so it's taking the flavours of a Kranachan and just sort of presenting it in a, a more fine dining-y sort of fashion. So riffing means taking something really nice and messing around with it, ruining it? <laughs> I wouldn't say ruining it, messing around with it, maybe, we'll see. Good luck. Thank you very much, guys. I actually think that Robert's menu is really interesting has a point of difference. It's a bit daring. The fact that you take a classic dessert like Kranikin, strip it apart and put it with a classic dessert such as panna cotta. The flavours should work. Thirty minutes are gone. I will have my lycra and my trainers on today, I think, with the timing that we've got to do going to be sprinting around the kitchen. It's going to be tight. What are you making, Tony? Uh, lamb neck fillet uh, with French uh, vegetables. The vegetables cooked in a cream and stock sauce. And then lemon parfait uh, on a shortbread biscuit uh, with a poppy seed twill for dessert. Right. The main course I can cope with, your dessert. A parfait, a biscuit and a twill. Yep in an hour and 15 minutes. It's a baked parfait as well, so the parfait's got to get in the oven uh, for 45 minutes, so as long as I can get that in quickly, we'll be all right. If Tony pulls it off, that dessert is a triumph of technical ability, because he's making a parfait and a shortbread biscuit and a twill. Now that is skillful, and I will really be very, very delighted and impressed if he manages it. I absolutely have something to prove uh, this time round. I need to prove that I can match flavours together on a plate. I need to make sure that I get it all out in time because that was really important that my timing was a bit funny. So I need to just prove, I need to prove a lot today. How are you feeling now that you, you fought your way through? Um, I'm feeling extremely grateful to be here and I'm really excited about this challenge. I'm making gnocchi on a bed of Swiss chard with fillet steak and a shallot cream sauce. And for dessert, I'm doing an avocado lime cheesecake on a pistachio biscuit base and pistachio brittle. Avocado cheesecake? Yeah. Why? Why take a risk of that? I love avocado and I really wanted to incorporate it in a dish. And what goes on the top of it? Pistachio brittle. Look, I like shock value, I like interesting food. 
but I like my avocado with nachos, thanks very much. What I really don't want to see is style over substance. I do not want to see the basics done badly and then hidden under elaborate garnishes. That will really upset me. Technically, I remember at this stage of the competition I was rubbish, so I won't be judging them harshly on whether or not they can make spherification or do some crazy, wacky, scientific thing, um, as long as it tastes good. What impresses me at this stage is flavours. Forget the fancy plates, you can, you can learn that. But to actually do the flavours and have the palate, that's what you need to go far in the competition. Sarah, 15 minutes please. I'm pushing, pushing. Sarah's cooking salmon on crew, courgette and cucumber ribbon salad. I like a good salmon on crew. It's a really good, honest dish, I think. Seasoned well, there's actually a lot of skill in there. It's not perfect. What's not perfect? What's Pastry, I didn't do the egg wash. Don't worry about that. Is that that's the least of our worries? Is it cooked? If it's not cooked, I'm dead. It's cooked. I can see it from here. Beautiful, beautiful. Two to go. Come on. Now, what goes on the plates, please? The salad. Yeah, what else? And the watercress sauce. Come on so, in, let's get them. Let's get them. Let's get... You got about a minute to go, Sarah, otherwise That's you're right. gonna be running late. You're doing it. You're doing it, you're doing it. And then the sauce? And then the sauce. Are we done then? We're done. Good effort. You ready, chef? Ready, chef. Service. <laughs> well done. Well done. Come on. I've cooked you salmon en croute with a ribbon salad and a watercress sauce. I just feel a bit sorry for her because she went to a lot of effort to make the pastry and I think that's, you know, good going for her, um, but probably just needs more colour. No seasoning. No. She's mm. totally missed the seasoning. Yeah. What a shame. I really, really like the salad. It's got some spice, it's got mustard seed, it's got chilli, and there's plenty of seasoning in that. Looking at the positive, she's cooked the salmon perfectly. And the fact that she's attempted to make her own pastry goes a long way. Nice texture, nice ideas, lacking a little bit of flavour. A little bit of flavour? It lacks a lot of flavour. Sarah? Yes. 15 minutes now, yeah? OK. Pudding goes. Sarah's doing an orange brandy parfait with mango coulis. Texturally, everything's a bit smooth and soft. They've probably all melted now. It doesn't really kind of scream excitement. It just seems a bit bland. What's got to go on them now? Mango? Mango and uh, some mango coulis. Is it slightly off-putting to consider that Shalina... is the queen of mangoes. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to be here. They're Happy? melting as we speak. Yes. Go, Good. Sarah, go. Smile. It's an uh, uh, orange liqueur parfait with mango coulis and some mango on the side. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation could do with a bit of work, but hey, she's got it set in that time frame. Good on her. Texturally, the parfait is brilliant. It's really creamy, it's properly lush, um, and of course, there's mango on there, so I'm chuffed with that.
it's ice cold, but then at the same time you get that heat from the booze, and she's got a really good amount of that, that orange liqueur through it. So the flavours are really singing. That's good pud. Well done. It's cream and orange, and the warmth of that booze in the background, and the sweetness of the mango. I like the mango coolie. I like that lovely taste of sunshine, but the rest of it, it's a bit, it's a bit flat. I'm feeling a little bit negative. I'm thinking, actually, that wasn't good enough. I can do better than that. And, um, but I'm proud of myself for having done eight plates in an hour and a quarter. That was speedy cooking. Robert, five minutes. Five minutes, then we go. Pan seared calves liver, pancetta crisp, parmesan polenta, balsamic onions. That's liver, bacon and onions. That's my sort of food. Do you know how you want it to look? I do. Whether we get there is a different matter. It's a classic, isn't it? Uh, make sure that the liver isn't overcooked. I don't want dry liver. So guys, for mains, we have uh, pan seared calf's liver. That's on cheesy polenta with balsamic onions and pancetta crisp. Thank you. I hope you enjoy well it. Thank you very much. No problem. If it tastes half as good as it smells, then we're on to an absolute winner. The liver's cooked really, really well. I love the touches of the fried sage. I think that really just lifts the dish. Normally, I'd have a gravy with this, um, but because the polenta's so soft, it doesn't really need it. The cheesy flavour comes through. Um, I think the crisp on the top, the pancetta, gives it enough seasoning. Um, and it's perfectly cooked. I'm really, really impressed. I could have eaten all of that twice over. It's delicious. Liver's cooked nicely. Bacon's crispy. Polenta's got a decent texture. A little bit of vinegar and a little bit of wine with those onions, and it would have been enough to get rid of the greasiness and make the dish lovely and rich. 15 minutes now, Robert, and desserts go, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Cranican panna cotta. Personally, it's something that's really good, like a cranican, classic dessert, don't mess with it. We've got Scottish-Italian fusion. I don't like the sound of it. I would never order this. Can I ask where you learnt about doing a panna cotta in a bowl like that? Uh, I believe I once saw it on MasterChef. Was it a girl I... called Ping by any chance? It might well have been. Yes. It might well have been. Nice, mate. Very, very nice. You've got about three minutes left, right? Thank you. Is that panna cotta perfectly set under there? That is what we're about to find out. Take that in and be proud. That looks great. Thank you very that much. That looks brilliant. Great. So for dessert, we've got a Cranachan panna cotta. It's a whiskey and vanilla panna cotta with raspberry coulis, toasted oats, and basil tea. Hope you Brilliant. enjoy. Thank well, you. Thank you, fellas. This looks beautiful. Look at the colours. It just looks stunning. It's one of the prettiest plates of food I've seen in ages. That's really delicious, and I'm talking with my mouth full. I don't really care. <laughs> It's good. You get the vanilla coming through in that panna cotta. The whiskey's there on the back. It's just a little bit of warmth on the back of the flavouring. Mm. That's superb cooking. The only negative is that I would have never thought of serving a panna cotta like this in a million years, and I wish I could have done. Beautiful. Beautiful dish. I absolutely love it. The cream the vanilla is great in that panna cotta. The oats on top, I like the texture. I think it's a lovely, lovely dessert. The basil, I think, is a stroke of genius because it, it gives it a whole new dimension, a whole new fresh flavour. Uh, relieved, it's over. I'm really happy with the dessert, definitely. Whether 
the main will be good enough is an entirely different question. Five minutes. We're, uh, we're on schedule. Lamb neck, French vegetables. What I want is a really good, tasty piece of meat that's tender and has a good gravy on it. And it'll be interesting to see if that's what he's done. What else have we got to do? Uh, lamb's got to go on, and then this is good to serve. Stay calm, lads, and focus, please. Looks good. Thank Smells you. good. Have you tasted a bit of that lamb? I have. It's gorgeous. Perfect. OK. Lovely dish. Hello. Hello. How is everybody? Very good. well. How, How are you? you? Very well, thank you. Very well indeed. For your main course today, you've got lamb neck fillet with um, French vegetables, vegetables cooked in uh, stock and cream. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's meat and veg, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with the way it's cooked. It's not tough. Everything's seasoned well. Doesn't kind of scream excitement. You know, I'm happy with that. I'm not delighted. But then if I went to a, a friend's house for dinner and got this, I wouldn't be at all upset. The lamb is cooked well. The vegetables are cooked well. It could have done with a cracker seasoning over the lamb, but lots to admire. Tony, what do you got left to do? Uh, finish off my coolie, shake my twills. Any biscuits are in the oven. You on time? I'm, uh, I'm on time, yeah. Thank you. I am looking forward to Tony's pudding, lemon parfait, poppy seed twill, great combination. Not much time to set a parfait. And twill's classic thing to go horribly wrong in a MasterChef kitchen. Go get them, mate. Thank you very Good much. work. Lots of work. Loads of work, job. Hello again. Hello. For your dessert, I've made a baked lemon parfait on a shortbread biscuit base uh, with a raspberry coulis and a poppy seed twill. Enjoy your meals. Thanks again. It's a monster twill, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty big. That's really sharp, that kind of lip puckering. It's like your cheeks in sharp. When you add the, the raspberries to it, it kind of hits you right at the back of your mouth. I'll tell you what, that as a lemon brulee on its own, if he'd just served that, it would have been good. Oh, good grief. I thought the lemon was sharp. I thought the raspberry had, had some sweetness. The raspberry's even sharper. It is very, very sharp, I agree with you. But there's lots of icing sugar on top of that, which is very sweet. The actual biscuit itself is also very sweet. And that poppy seed twill is really, really sweet. But I tell you what, under pressure, I think Tony's done a pretty good job. I feel exhausted. You're only in there for an hour and 15 minutes, but you don't stop. I'm ready to, to pass out now and just curl up into a little ball. Olivia, you've got about seven minutes. Are we going to see any food on a plate? Yep, you will. You'll see all of it. Steak and gnocchi. There's a lot going on, actually. I wouldn't normally put gnocchi with a fillet steak.
Am I over? No, you're on time. Hello. Hello. Thank you. I've made for you gnocchi on a bed of Swiss chard with fillet steak and a shallot cream sauce. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Serious lump of meat. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Ooh, that's pretty red. Yep. That's, uh, that's blue. Her steak is seasoned perfectly. Her sauce is delicious. It adds a seasoning for the gnocchi, adds more seasoning to the steak. It's got a really good flavour. I really don't like the gnocchi. I wish she'd done some chips with it. I, I disagree with you a little bit. They're, they're not ideal, but they're fine. So I'm happy. The Swiss chard is cooked, the gnocchi is made, the sauce is decent. Nice colour on the outside of the beef. However, the beef is far too rare for me. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. An avocado cheesecake with a pistachio biscuit base. I wouldn't put those together. Everything's beginning to feel like a kind of 1970s bathroom suite, that kind of avocado green. I'm scared. How long have I got? 30 One seconds in a freezer. Yeah, go, 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 quick. She's using an initiative. Break. Whee! That's it. Give John a nice piece to take home in his pocket. Smash it. So for you, I've made an avocado lime cheesecake on a pistachio biscuit base with pistachio brittle. And I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Mm. I'm not looking forward to trying it. Hopefully it's gonna prove me wrong. I mean, that base doesn't look good in green. It's kind of all my worst fears about what could have gone wrong realized. It's horrible. Sorry, I, and I know she's tried to do something different. It's really bad. That's different, and not at all in a good way. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, wow. Oh. I don't know, I don't, I don't think I've done enough. I just, I didn't, nothing looked the way I wanted it to. It was as close as I could do it in the time, but it just wasn't how I wanted it to look. I knew when I saw the dishes go out that we were going to have a tough job here. I really did. And it's difficult, I know. But how exciting that we've got some great cooks in the room and we've got to be able to work it out. Olivia, I think, has great intentions, some really good ideas. I think the steak was a nice idea. The sauce with it was great. But throughout this competition, she's making mistakes and doing things which don't quite work out. Being a quarter finalist, um, I'm not even letting myself think about it because I might just cry. Like, I, I can't even imagine how that would feel, and I would love it so, so much, but I'm just trying to stay grounded just now. I found Robert's liver with the onions and the polenta a little greasy, but our guests really enjoyed it. What we all agree on, me, you, and our mates, our winners, is that Robert's dessert was an absolute smash, a real winner. I think if you compare my two dishes, the dessert is the showstopper. It was always designed to be that way, and I am hoping that it will see me through, definitely. Sarah's calling card has shown you and I that she has a great amount of technical ability. I wanted to make sure that she could do savoury dishes as accomplished, as flavoursome as that dessert. And I don't think she pulled it off today. I think uh, I'll be saying goodbye at the end of the day. I think that wasn't um, up to scratch. Tony has the ability to present me with food that I really want to get stuck into. He is a very good cook. But our guests were not overwhelmed by his main course. 
or his dessert. Now, that's a bit of an issue. But you loved his main course. I loved his main course. Yeah, you did. And I thought his dessert was well accomplished. If I go home now, after the effort and, uh, and the love that's gone into the food, I'll, I'll be, yeah, really upset. We only have two quarterfinal places to give. Our first quarterfinalist is Robert. Congratulations. Thank you. Our second quarterfinalist I can completely understand the outcome. I'll hopefully still be doing something with food in my life, just maybe need a bit more practice before I do. <laughs> Obviously disappointed. I sort of knew in my heart of hearts that it wasn't cooking at my best. Amazing. Oh my God. Oh, Dad. Mate, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so elated in my life. I mean, it's, it's a real shock. I mean, you really don't know how it's going to go. <gasps> so, so happy and relieved at the same time. And I get to come back and do it all again. <laughs> Next time, five more cooks battle it out for a place in the quarterfinals. I love it. I think I can eat the whole bowl. This may be one of the biggest disasters I've ever seen on MasterChef. <laughs>